So last week, Pastor Chip started a sermon series called God's Will, and um, I, we've been talking about this. I've been talking about this for a while, but just thinking about probably one of the most important questions you could ever ask, especially after you come to salvation or you open your life up to God and you say, Jesus, you're my Lord. Probably the most important question you will ever ask is, what is God's will for my life? And it is a challenge sometimes to get that answered. I think, I, I, the sad thing is, I think lots of people go through their lives and never get that answered. They wander, uh, they're always looking and trying to figure it out. They say, I, you know, I know God has something for me, I'm not sure what it is, and so they live their entire lives like that. I think it's especially a, a big struggle uh, as uh, young people graduate high school, as they graduate college, they're faced with these major decisions, you know, what is God's will for my life? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to be a nurse? Am I supposed to be a doctor? Am I supposed to be an engineer? Am I supposed to be an accountant? Am I supposed to be in the banking industry, the mechanics, auto mechanic, computer technician? You know, where, where am I supposed to be? Am I supposed to be in sales? Am I supposed to be in the trades? And I don't think this just happens in high school and college, but I think this is something we, we ask ourselves throughout our lives. Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I in God's will? And the scary part about this is you, you start thinking, well, what if I make the wrong decision? You know, what if I choose the wrong career path? What, what's going to happen with my life? Well, I, I, what I think the way it works, and this is what we'll be talking about over the next several weeks, is that God reveals his will as we learn to walk in his will every day. It unfolds, but it's not like it comes in some dream or vision. I think the key ingredient to discovering God's will is being able to ask yourself this question, am I in God's will today? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And if I can answer that question, yes, then I think God continues to unfold and reveal his future will, other things that he has for us to do with our skills and our talents. So this is what we're trying to do with this sermon series. We're looking at Bible passages that say in the Bible passage, this is God's will. So this is not going to take great theological research to figure this out. If it says this is God's will, then we need to say, okay. But the idea is, if th these statements, this is God's will, they're sort of general statements, like they're for everyone. And when you ask the question, you know, what is God's will for my life, really what we're trying to say is, well, I'm an individual, uh, how do I figure that out for me? But I think what the scriptures are teaching uh, us is that if we learn how to do these things that say, this is God's will, and if we can answer that question, what I'm doing right now is God's will, then God will reveal what he wants you to do as an individual with your skills and talents. I think it's critically important that, that you can say, what I'm doing right now, I'm in God's will. This is a powerful statement. Like, I'm going to school. Is that God's will for your life right now? Yes. I'm a stay-at-home mother. Is that God's will for your life right now? Yes. I'm working in this industry. I'm starting out my new career. Is that God's will for your life? Yes. I'm not asking, and we shouldn't be asking, is this God's will for the rest of my life? Am I going to be doing this to the day I die? Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew, take no thought. Don't be worrying about tomorrow. Deal with today. What he was saying is live in the day, live in the moment, and answer that question, am I, you know, am I in the will of God? Is the job that I'm currently doing God's will? I mean, this, is, this was a birthed into me as a young Christian that whatever I was doing, I needed to deal with this. Is this God's will? And I didn't have to answer, I will do this the rest of my life. I don't know what the future holds, but I need to be able to answer what I'm doing today. And so what we're looking at is trying to discover what's God's will, and we'll look at these passages and see how they apply and how they will reveal what's God's will for your life. Because I think sometimes we have this fantasy about how does God reveal his will and we think it's going to come as a, a lightning bolt you know one day you're just going to wake up and say I got it this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life I don't see that I don't see that in scripture and I don't even think if he says to you you're going to be an accountant or a doctor or you're going to be in sales I still think you have to discover what does that mean and how does that play out there's so many variations in every one of those careers and opportunities. You have to be able to say, yeah, but what I'm doing right now, is this God's will? So uh, last week, 
uh, Pastor Chip talked about giving thanks. And that's not just a, you know, a generic statement, oh, it's nice to give thanks. What, what we're saying is, the passage he read was, if you live a lifestyle of giving of thanks, which all, obviously all of us participated in on Thursday, you know, we gave thanks, but, but we're talking about a lifestyle. If you learn how to live a lifestyle of giving thanks, it opens doors, it begins to reveal things, and you begin to follow that path. I'm, I'm convinced that so many people are so uh, scattered in their careers and so scattered with their jobs because they can't answer that question, and so they're not focused, and they're constantly looking, trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out. You know, rather than that, just say, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing today? If the answer to that is yes, God will reveal his will. And actually, that's his will for you today. That's it. It's not some deep mystery, but it's learning how to say, well, what is his will for me today? So we're going to look at another scripture this morning. It's found in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, and we'll read verse 15. We'll read a couple of verses around it, but we'll look first at uh, chapter 2, verse 15. Peter says in uh, chapter 2, verse 15, For this is the will of God. Anybody have a problem with understanding what that means? This is the will of God. This is the will of God. What is that? That by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Powerful statement being made by Peter. You want to know, you want to discover God's will for your life? We have to walk the path of doing good. We have to walk the path of serving others. If we're going to discover why did God make me, what's my purpose in life, we have to go down this path. And part of the reason is it's not just the impact it has on others, it's the impact it has on us. You know, we are not normally, we're not born uh, other-centered. We're not born thinking about other people. We are born self-centered and everything we do is about us. And learning how to live this kind of lifestyle opens up whole new dimensions and begins to open up why we were created. It keeps our selfishness in check. And it actually uh, gives us purpose for living because without this understanding that we're supposed to do good, we live our lives for ourselves. And there's nothing more empty than living your life for yourselves. You go to work, you make your money, you buy stuff, you go to sleep, you go to work the next day. I mean, where's the purpose? It's not just about me. There has to be something else. And this is what Peter is saying. Part of that is learning how to do good. Learning how to serve others, this is going to give us purpose in life. You know, years ago, there was a, a TV talk show. It was called the Murph Griffin Show. It was back in the 70s, 80s. Maybe some of you remember. This would be before Johnny Carson and Jimmy Fallon. You know, night show, daytime show. It was on for about 20 years. He had all kinds of guests, but he had one guest, and uh, this guy was a bodybuilder and like a you know, world-class champion bodybuilder. And so in the interview, he's asking the guy, he says, so why do you build these muscles? And so the guy flexes his chest and he does this pose and his calves are all, you know, awesome looking and everybody's clapping and, and he goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, but I mean, why? why? Why are you building these muscles? And he does one of these kind of things and, you know, biceps and he turns, his triceps are popping out. And Merv Griffin says the third time, I know, but he goes, why, why are you building these muscles? The guy just shook his head. He said, well, to show, man. And he sat down and it was like, that's a little weird. <laughs> but you know what? A lot of Christians have that kind of view of Christian faith. Why, why are you being built up? You know, why, why is God uh, giving you purpose and direction in life? Where are you going? What are your muscles for? You know, some people, they, they get this so confused. It's all about, you know, being fed and growing and developing and getting new revelations. I mean, this is kind of an American thing. You have to get a new revelation at least once a week, you know. And it's like, okay, I'm all for new revelations. But the question is, why? Why? What, what's the purpose? Where are you going with this? And, and I think maybe Peter's given us a little direction and saying, well... If you want to discover God's will in your life, do good, and as a result of doing good, God can use you to advance his kingdom. Because this is what he's saying, when you are doing good, you are putting to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Something happens when we go about doing good. In other words, it, it, it's just hard being mad at people who are being kind to you. I mean, they may be mad at you for a while, but you want to win people over, you just show them kindness. And this is not just talking about 
doing good deeds to people that we like. It's not just talking about doing good deeds to our family and to our friends. This is talking about, you know, doing good deeds to people who don't deserve it. Being kind to people who are mean to us. Being kind to people who are doing us wrong. Serving them. That, that is as opposed to talking bad about them. I mean, folks, it's wrong when you have these situations at work and you come home and you unload on your wife or your husband or your friends. People at work are such jerks, you know, they're like this or like that. No, no. No, man, we're here to bless and to serve. This is kingdom lifestyle. This is kingdom living. And this is what gives us purpose in life. And this is what gives us direction. And this is why we're being built up. So we're not just being built up to show off our cool muscles. We're trying to be a part of the kingdom of God. And when we show kindness... We advance the kingdom of God. And there is such an urgent need for this in our country today. There are people who are so negative about the church. This is why I'm so passionate about constantly telling you we need to get involved in ministry. This is why we have our free clinics. And, and, and in case you haven't noticed it, you, it wins favor in the community. We're winning favor in the community, not just because we want to win favor. We want to win favor to advance the kingdom of God. It, it, almost all the time when I'm out and about and I'll tell somebody I'm from Vineyard Community Church, they say, oh, you mean that church on Paul? You guys do so much for the community. I tell them, yeah, because we want to advance the kingdom of God. We love Jesus. We're trying to serve people. It breaks down their defenses. People have such negative views of church. I mean, some people, their only view of church is what they see on TV. The televangelist is always asking for money, and so they think the church is a ripoff, and they, you tell them you go to church, and they unload on you. I remember years ago meeting some guy and telling him, he asked me what I did, and I said I was a pastor, and man, he just exploded on me. You know, whoa, church is such a ripoff, like a five-minute tirade, and I thought, hey, ho, back off, buddy, you know, like, I didn't do anything to you, you know, he was so mad. You see, you see the TV preachers and they're taking all this money and they're living these extravagant lifestyles or they have friends or neighbors who say they're Christians and they're hypocrites and they're, you know, they're mean-spirited and stuff. And so there's a negative view about church and Christianity. How are we going to win that? Are you going to talk them into it and you know, convince them? Or maybe what Peter's saying here, do good. Serve them. Serve them. It puts to silence. It shuts the mouth of people who are negative about church, it's difficult to be mad at people who do kind deeds to you. And what he's saying is, advance the kingdom of God. If you want to know the will of God for your life, this is the will of God. Go out and do good. Put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. If you back up a few verses, he kind of expounds on this a little bit when he says in verse 12, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. So they may say the church is a ripoff and the church is here to take, but when they see your good works, it, it does something to them. It's so contrary to human nature, it stops them in their path. Now, why are you doing this? Because God has changed my life and God has forgiven me and God has freely given to me. I, I, I just want to be a part of his work. And he's saying you are advancing the kingdom of God. You know, we are not all uh, necessarily called to be preachers. We're not all called to be evangelists, you know. But we know that Jesus gave the great commission to all of his followers. And the great commission is go into all the world and advance the kingdom. And for many people, that strikes fear in their hearts. It's like, I, I just... I can't do that. You know, I don't, I don't feel comfortable telling people about my faith. Well, you shouldn't have that negative feeling, but, but I think maybe what we could look at is there is a way to be a voice for God. There is a way to be a voice for God without being a voice for God. How is that? Doing good works. Doing good works. You become a voice in their head. When you serve people, it, it kind of, you know, goes around in their head. They think about it. It affects them. When people serve me, it just, it, it affects me. There's something supernatural in serving. And I think it even goes farther than that. I think they eventually tell their friends, these people help me out here. And, and, or else I'm being mean to somebody and they help me out. It just becomes difficult to continue to be mean. P- Peter's saying here, having your conduct honorable, that they may speak against you as evildoers, but when they observe your good works... They glorify God. It opens people's hearts. 
We become part of advancing the kingdom of God. Every one of us are called to be part of advancing the kingdom of God. Every one of us. Doesn't matter what your job is. Doesn't matter if you're going to school. Doesn't matter whatever. If you're just starting your career. Doesn't matter if you're ending your career. Part of discovering the will of God is discovering how can I be a part of advancing God's kingdom. That gives us purpose. That's part of why we're here is to advance the kingdom of God so that other people can experience the kingdom of God. The rule of God is a good kingdom. It teaches us how to live properly. And so we're advancing the kingdom of God, not, not out of obligation, but out of gratefulness. So I'm trying to discover God's will for my life. How do I do it? I do it by doing good works. I look for opportunity to serve other people. I'm open especially to those who don't deserve it. You know, Jesus made it clear, look, anybody can be kind to their friends. He said, even the heathen know how to do that. But it's being kind to those that we think don't deserve it, who are being weird at work, who are being unkind in the neighborhood, and saying, gosh, I, I want to find God's will for my life. Well, here it is. Here, this is God's will. Make no mistake about it. If we walk in that and learn how to participate in that, we will discover why God made us. Peter expounds a little bit on this. Uh, if you turn forward in chapter 4, he makes mention of this again, but he says it a little differently in chapter 4. Verse 10. As each one of you has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. I want to read this again to you, but I will read it to you in another translation. It kind of opens it up a little bit. In the NIV, it reads, As each, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. What, what he's talking about here is, yes, we should go out and do good works, but the reality of doing good works is that we each are different in our ability to serve others. We don't all have the same giftings and talents. We don't all do it the same way. When it comes to serving other people, I believe we each have a unique way that we do it. So some of you, it may be in service projects. You may go and help like someone cut their lawn or wash their car. Some of you may uh, bake, you know, make some food for somebody who's sick. You, you know, you see their needs. Some of you may be more uh, relational, and it's like just encouraging somebody, saying something when they're discouraged or sending them a kind note. Uh, some of us may be, uh, depending where we are in our lives, maybe that's a way of serving by coaching a team or Maybe it's serving someplace in the church on Sunday, in, in the Sunday service, or with the children. Uh, maybe it's considering running for office. I mean, it's, you know, at some point, folks, we have to deal with this idea that saying negative things about politician is, politicians is not going to accomplish anything. It just doesn't. Part of the reason we have such a problem is because we have Christians who won't even consider running for office. I mean, if we had God-fearing men and women running for office, I don't think we would have as many problems as we have with our political system right now. But, but part of that is understanding, well, yeah, you may be called to that, but I'm not. You may be called to doing that, but I'm not. Uh, and and I, I don't have to feel obligated that I have to do it the way you do it or the way you do it or the way you do it. But Peter is saying here, look, as each of you has received the gift, find and discover how you can do those good works with your gifts and your talents. In other words, figuring out what you're most comfortable with. You know, when it comes to serving, I think of it like um, in sports. You know, if you've played any kind of sports like uh, uh, tennis or, or badminton or ping pong, you know, at some point you develop your serve, right? I mean, if you played people with their ping pong serve, I think they cheat all the time, but, you know, they're holding the ball and they, you know, they spin it and the ball's going all over the place, but that's their signature serve. It's what they're good at. They've developed it. They've figured it out. It's what they're comfortable with. Well, this is what it's about here, what Peter's saying. Figure that out. Trying to discover God's will for your life. Part of discovering God's will is saying, where, where am I good? What am I comfortable with? How can I do good deeds and learn how to function in that and become good at it? Become very good at it and become part of advancing the kingdom of God. There, there, there's a couple things here, though, when it comes to serving that I think we have to deal with, and that is whether, 
you have the gift of serving in one capacity and whether you have it in another capacity, there is a similarity that I think we all have to deal with, and that is when it comes to doing good works, when it comes to serving other people, most often it's inconvenient. It just is. And, and unless we're alert to this, we miss these opportunities. In other words, there are times where you can plan a service project. Like we have numerous service projects we plan throughout the year. And the idea is that we set aside the time so we make sure we have that time open. And I believe God uses those and they're very powerful. But I also believe that this whole idea of serving sometimes is uh, uh, unplanned. And, and what happens is we live busy lives. And so we get so busy, we just don't see those opportunities to serve. Because this idea of doing good, it's not talking about serving with this kind of attitude. Hey, if you ever need any help, give me a call. That doesn't work. Most people are hesitant to ask for help. I mean, we just, you're just uncomfortable, and so you end up doing it yourself. But when he's talking about doing good works, he's talking about having these eyes where you're looking and you're intentional. But not only that, but saying, ah, oh, you know, I was planning to do this today and I see this person has need. And this willingness to do good with the understanding that most often it comes at inconvenient times. But taking advantage of that, because I think there's the power there, rather than, again, living lives of selfishness, saying, I understand that. It's being intentional, looking out and keeping an eye on recognizing this is part of discovering the will of God. So in summary, in your quest for discovering the will of God for your life, I think it's an eternal project. I don't think it ends at any given moment. I think even if he has revealed to you your career path, I still think your career path has many different variations, and still it's a daily process. Am I in the will of God? Part of discovering the will of God is asking yourself, what are you doing regarding good works? Where are you serving? If you will find a place to serve and then eventually find a place to serve where you are comfortable, I believe God begins to reveal to you your specific gifts and talents and where, you know, where he wants to use you. And again, it's an everyday process. It's not, not something where he says, this is, this is my will for you the rest of your life. It's learning how to do like Jesus said, take each day and finding what he wants for me to do today and be able to say, yes, today I'm in the will of God. Amen? Let's close in prayer. God, I thank you that serving you is, uh, first of all, it's, it's a good thing. We're, we're not doing it out of obligation. We serve you because of who you are and what you have done. But God, we recognize you're the one who created us. And so since you created us, we want to walk in that purpose for what you created us for. And, and in discovering that, God, we realize there are some basic things. Being thankful serving others, God. God, I pray for each person here today that you will stir their hearts and uh, open our eyes to be intentional about serving and recognizing that this is part of our purpose. We're, we're not here just to be built up. We're not here just to survive. But God, you, you want us to be a part of advancing your kingdom and that we can do that by serving people. Help us to serve people at work, people in our neighborhoods, people in our communities, especially those who don't deserve it, God. That we might help them see something bigger and better in their lives. Holy Spirit, we just welcome your presence here right now. You know, as I was uh, preparing this sermon, I really sensed, I, I just, I, a couple of words came into my mind and um, I just want to put them out there and have you pray about them and uh, see if God's speaking to you. But I got this word like new beginnings, changes. Uh, I think it's probably because some of you right now today cannot say what you are doing is God's will. And if that's the case, man, we want to get that dealt with. You don't want to live your life like that. And that God would give you direction and plan to start you know, functioning. And I also got a sense this morning, new beginnings, this word that came to me was that God's stirring some of your hearts about some areas, maybe like ministries, that you might want to start, and maybe we start here at the church. 
something that you feel is stirring that may be your gift or your talent or your passion so that uh, we could run with that and be a part of what God's doing. So, Father, I just pray right now, Holy Spirit, I pray for each person in this room. Can you just, everybody, just take that time right now and just ask yourself, am I in God's will right now? struggling. I pray this morning, God, we, we begin to get that resolved, that they can begin to live in a place where they are in your will, experiencing that blessing. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we all stand? We'll take our offering at this time. We have our prayer team up front here. things in my spirit as I was worshiping, just maybe some special needs some of you may be dealing with. I, I got this word grinding teeth, somebody grinding their teeth at night, and I just, got, you know, I just came to me, I just felt like the Holy Spirit might want to touch you this morning, get that healed, whatever's causing that. Also, uh, I, I just got this sense somebody's um, really being beat up in their minds just for mistakes they've made in the past, and I just felt really strong this morning to just take a minute and pray for you, because that is just such... Uh, that's such a setback. You know, the Bible says clearly, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you. It's a done deal. It's the enemy who continues to bring that up. So I just want to take a minute and just pray. If there's anybody just beating yourself up or not really you, it's probably the enemy speaking into your head. I want to pray a release this morning. You walk out of here that the sun begins to shine instead of that dark cloud. So Holy Spirit of God, I pray right now. Just lift that cloud off of these individuals, God, who may be hearing voices that are condemning them, Father, for past mistakes. In the name of Jesus, God, that they could experience this morning true and clear forgiveness and cleansing, God, that your light could shine through, could shine through, Holy Spirit. Today, that it happens today, right now, right now. Name of Jesus right now. Okay, so so Roxanne's saying she's getting a word. Somebody's having some trouble with their kidneys and gallbladder this morning. So again, we just try to stay open to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes words just pop into your head and you know you just why, but I think when it does that is to give you faith to say God sees your need. It's calling you out. So somebody dealing with some kidney problems this morning, gallbladder. If you're dealing with some other illnesses or you need prayer, you know, if you couldn't say this morning at the end of the sermon when I took that time, if you couldn't say, I'm in God's will right now, come up and get some prayer, man. Let's get that taken care of. You want to walk out of here saying, today I'm in God's will. Tomorrow when I go to work or school, whatever I do, I'm in God's will. So we're going to close with one song. If you need prayer, we're welcome to come, come up and get some prayer.
singing you this song I'm waiting at the cross And all the world holds dear I count it all as loss For the sake of knowing you For the glory of your name To know the lasting joy sharing in your pain and I surrender all to you all to you and I surrender I surrender and I surrender all to you all to you and I surrender all to you Just lift your hands and sing it. pray with you if you need it. Otherwise, that concludes our service. Have a great week. Be blessed. We'll see you here next week.